All right, before we get into this video, I just wanna let you all know that Sun Founder is running a 20% off sale on the Raspad 3 for Black Friday. Now, if you wanna get this deal, you can click on any of the Amazon links in the description below, or you can go to the official Sun Founder website. So this deal runs from midnight on November 27th, all the way to 11.59 p.m. on November 29th. Check them out if you're interested in picking up one of these. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with This Smart House and happy Thanksgiving to my fellow Americans and happy Thursday to everybody else. So today we're finishing up my video series on the Raspad 3. If you missed my setup video, you can find the card here above to go to that video. In that video, I showed you how to set up one of these Raspads with Raspberry Pi and some cool, and some ideas for some cool projects in the future. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up Home Assistant using Docker, and I'm gonna use the Raspad as an example, but you can do this on any Raspberry Pi that you wanna install Docker on and, and run the Home Assistant supervisor version. Now in a previous video, I showed you how to set up Home Assistant by flashing a dedicated SD card and running Home Assistant OS. Now this version differs from that because you can continue to use the Raspberry Pi for other things. If you flash the Home Assistant OS, you're only able to use it for Home Assistant. You don't have any GUI. It strips much of the non-essential software out of there that does, isn't required for usage for Home Assistant. Now, the version I'm gonna show you today can be ran on top of an existing Linux install, so you can continue to use the, the GUI of Raspbian, use the Raspberry Pi for other things. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the Docker, install Home Assistant Supervisor D, how to set up your tablet in kiosk mode, so when you boot up the Pi, it'll automatically display your Home Assistant instance. And finally, I'll show you some hacks that you can do on the hardware to make yourself an all-in-one Home Assistant, to make yourself an all-in-one Home Assistant tablet. So for all this, I'm gonna assume you already have your Raspberry Pi 4 set up, you got it raspy and running on it, and you're connected to the internet. So there are four methods for installing Home Assistant. Now, if you go to this URL here below, it shows you all the different install methods from the official Home Assistant documentation. So the first most common one is the Home Assistant OS, where you flash an SD card with a dedicated operating system, pop it into a Raspberry Pi, and you're booting up into the Home Assistant and you're booting up into Home Assistant. Now this is the most efficient for Home Assistant because it has the minimal amount of extra software that runs while you're trying to run Home Assistant. So you can also run Home Assistant inside of a dedicated Docker container. This runs just the Home Assistant core in a Docker container and allows it to be secured and controlled separate from the core operating system you're running on. Now there are two other methods that are considered less common one of those being the original method, which is running it inside of a Python virtual environment. And then the fourth version, which is what we're gonna to tackle today, is running the supervised version in Docker. And if you're not familiar with the supervisor is, it's the function that shows up on the Home Assistant OS that allows you to install add-ons, but also have more control over the hardware that you're currently running on. This is not available on the standard Docker version, but if you run the supervised version, you can get access to the core OS and also install all of those add-ons that made Home Assistant or HASIO famous. So on that previous link that I showed you, it shows you all the different things that you gain or lose from running different versions of Home Assistant. Obviously the most complete is the OS version, but the next closest is, is the supervised that we're doing today. So the first thing we need to do is get Docker set up on a Raspberry Pi, and then we can get Home Assistant set up after that. First thing we need to do is install Docker on a Raspbian image. Now I did cover this on a previous video for the SDR project, which if you haven't watched that and you want a more detailed explanation, you can go to the card here above. But quickly I'll take you through that process again. So I'm VNC'd into my Raspad right now. So we'll go ahead and open up terminal. And we wanna go ahead and make sure everything's up to date. So sudo apt git update. So sudo apt git update and sudo apt git upgrade, which I just did this before. So it should already be up to date. Next, we're gonna install some prerequisites. Again, if you'd like to follow along, you can just open up the blog post and then copy and paste these commands over so you don't have to type them off there, but I will show them here on screen just for ease of use. Sudo apt git install. We're gonna install network manager, app armor utils, jq, and then the dash, the hyphen y indicates yes to all the answers to the questions. All right, after a few minutes, the install is completed. Now we need to go ahead and reboot the Pi. So do a sudo reboot. And while that happens, um, I did have a weird glitch on mine where during the setup process for the prerequisites for Docker, it did change my IP address right in the middle of setting up the script. So I'm not sure if that's something you may, may or may not encounter, so just be aware. If you do, you can click on that VNC icon in the top right hand corner, and then it will show you what the IP address is of the device. The Pi is rebooted. Let's move on to the next step. So we'll open up terminal again. Then we wanna go ahead and issue the command to download the latest Docker installer script. That command is curl hyphen lowercase f lowercase 
uppercase S, uppercase L, HTTPS, colon forward slash forward slash git.docker.com hyphen O, and then we're gonna grab the git-docker.sh. That should complete fairly quickly. Now we wanna go ahead and execute that by running sudo sh git docker.sh. This is gonna go ahead and execute the install script, which makes this super easy. All right, now the Docker install is complete. So to test this real quick, before we can test this, let's go ahead and give our Pi user the proper Docker permissions. So to do this, it's as simple as running sudo user mod dash a uppercase g docker pi. And then to test it, we just need to run docker ps. So this means, oh, when we need to, so we can run sudo docker ps, and there it's functional. The reason we currently cannot execute the docker ps command as the pi user is because we need to log off and log back in again as that user to get those rights established. All right, so from here, we're gonna divert a slight bit from what the original poster had created because it, they've superseded that original script with a newer script. They're using now what's called OS agent to figure out which one you're properly using. Before we can install the Home Assistant Supervisor version, we need to install what's called the OS agent, which allows the Home Assistant Supervisor to talk to the core OS better, similar to how it does in the full uh, Home Assistant OS install. So if you go to this short URL below, it'll take you to the latest releases for Home Assistant's OS agent. And we're looking at the current page. So currently it's version 1.2.2. Now to grab the correct version, we want to go down here to the Linux underscore arm v7 dot deb. That's the latest version for the Raspberry Pi 4. So we'll go ahead and right click on that one and copy link location. And then we're going to head back to our VNC session. Go ahead and do a wget and paste that in. Now there are a couple of different ways you can obviously download a script. You can use curl. I like using wget because it's a shorter command. So let's make sure it's there. And we see the OS agent right there. And then finally, we'll go ahead and run the installer, sudo dpkg-i OS agent, and then the full name of the file, os-agent underscore 1.2.2 underscore Linux underscore arm v7 dot deb. All right, so now that we've got the Home Assistant OS agent set up, let's go ahead and get the supervisor version installed. And yet again, we have another long command, so let's go ahead and just pay, copy and paste this from the blog post. We're gonna run wget, we're gonna pull down the Home Assistant supervised version .deb. And then just like before, we run sudo dpkg-i, and then we can Home Assistant-supervised.deb. All right, so then as part of the install, part of the install, it's gonna pop up and ask you what type of device you're installing this on. So obviously we're gonna scroll down here to the bottom and go to Raspberry Pi 4. Now, if you were installing this on a 64-bit operating system, you would do that here, but the default Raspbian is 32-bit still. So we're gonna go ahead and select Raspberry Pi 4, hit enter. So now it's gonna install the Docker container and finish the installation. So there we go. Now it's finished the installer. So to test this, first of all, let's run sudo docker ps. See if it's running. And there we go, both of those are currently running. All right, so now that the Home Assistant has been installed in the Docker container, we've confirmed the Docker container is up and functional. We have to wait about five to 10 minutes for the Docker, we have to wait five to 10 minutes for Home Assistant to finish setting itself up before we can access it via the URL. Now the Home Assistant has finished setting up and we've waited the five to 10 minutes to confirm the container has started. Let's go ahead and go to, we'll go to localhost colon 8123. And here we are. Now we have our Home Assistant onboarding screen. So we're ready to go ahead and set up Home Assistant. All right, so there's the Home Assistant onboarding screen. So now we can go ahead and set up the Home Assistant the way you want it to. Now I'm not gonna cover that in this video because I've covered it in past ones. So go ahead and set this up the way you want it to. And then we'll hop over the next step configuring the display for kiosk mode. All right, so in this section, we're gonna set up Chromium to use it as a kiosk mode, so that way when the Pi automatically boots up, it'll display your Home Assistant instance up on screen. Now, if you are wanting to do this on an existing Home Assistant instance, say you have Home Assistant running on another Raspberry Pi and you just wanna use one of these displays somewhere in your house, you can follow along from here on. Just substitute the local host with your current Home Assistant URL. So the default browser on Raspberry Pi, which is the Chromium browser, which is a version based off Chrome that runs well on the Raspberry Pi. So the default image of Raspbian automatically loads in as the Pi user, so we don't need to set up auto log on. So we're just gonna set up the kiosk browser. Now, if you wanted to, you could create a different user and give them lower rights and have the Pi automatically log into that particular one. But I'm not gonna cover that on this episode because it's a little more complicated. And for me, I just wanna run as the default user anyway. So again, you can do this either in SSH or in the actual GUI, but I'm gonna show you in the GUI how to do this because it's easier to show on screen. So we're gonna go to sudo. So we're gonna, go to, we're gonna do sudo make mkdir slash home slash pi slash dot config, which is a hidden configuration folder. And then it's called auto start. And then we're going to go to sudo nano, same directory, 
we're going to create a file called kiosk.desktop. Now again, I've got all this code on the blog post, so you can cut, feel free to copy and paste from there. So let's copy and paste in this part. So desktop entry, type application, name is kiosk. It's in our home directory, kiosk.sh, and go ahead and do, when GNOME starts, go ahead and run this. So we'll do control X and hit Y, then enter to save. So then we wanna to go to do a sudo nano, and this will be the kiosk.sh, and we'll paste in the code from the post. So these instructions I've adapted from a blog post on the O'Brien Labs website. Now I've got references to the, in the blog post, but again, I've got a cut down version of it on the blog post, so you can follow along if you want to, but all credit goes to the original websites for developing these tutorials. All right, so we've pasted it in the file. We'll go ahead and hit Control X, yes. And then we wanna run sudo chmod plus x kiosk. This will allow this sh file to be executed. And we can test that by closing out of our browser and then typing kiosk. Chrome browser will open automatically. So I have alt tab back into the terminal and then hit control C to kill it. All right, so on screen here below, I've got the script taken from the O'Brien Labs website. Now I've made a few key modifications here. One, I've taken out the X do tool, which will rotate tabs. So if you had multiple tabs you wanted to display at the same time, you could leave this enabled. And then over here to the right, where we've got the list of URLs, you could list multiple websites on there and have it tab through those automatically every 15 seconds. But in this case, since this is gonna be a dedicated home assistant device, we can just get rid of that. So I've go ahead, gone ahead and commented those out, but I've left them in the example in case you want to use them. Now, the one thing we need to modify here is this is the startup for the Chromium browser. Now it's going to start it in what's called kiosk mode. Kiosk mode is a special mode. Any You can't close out of the tabs. It doesn't have an X out in the corner. Um, you can't actually modify the window. It takes very minimal inputs. It's intended to just display a single web page and leave it up on screen. Now you could change this out and make this go into full screen mode if you wanted to, if you wanted to be able to have the capability of closing the window instead. So if you switch out kiosk for full screen, that should allow you to open it in full screen mode. So if you don't want it to open in kiosk mode, but you want it to open in full screen mode, you can change out this dash kiosk for dash dash start full screen. Now to the right here, we want to modify this URL to our localhost colon 8123. Or if you were wanting to access a different web page, you could put that here. But in this case, we're going to access the local home assistant instance. So we can go ahead and copy this whole thing here, switch back over to our, we want to run sudo nano slash sudo nano kiosk.sh and paste in all that code that we had before. Hit control X and then Y to save. And then we want to run sudo chmod plus X for executable and then kiosk.sh. Now to test this, we can just execute dot slash kiosk.sh. And there we go. Now we're in full screen mode. So in full screen mode, we can hit F11 and exit full screen mode and get out of there. If you wanted to lock this out, if you wanted to lock this out, you could use that dash dash kiosk and then you cannot exit it. You either do Alt F4 or you'll have to close it out of SSH, but I like to use the full screen command instead. That way you can open and close it if you want to. So we'll go ahead and reboot this and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes back up again. Now, since I won't be able to open up VNC fast enough to catch the startup command, I'll go ahead and just show you here on screen. Oop. I didn't have faith in it. <laughs> and there you go. We haven't finished the onboarding yet, and also this hasn't fully started up. So that's why you see just the blue screen. So you may have to hit a refresh. Now we see the, the normal onboarding screen. You could put a delay or a wait in the startup script if you wanted it to wait a few seconds or a few minutes before it actually opened up the browser, but it's just gonna sit here and spin until you refresh or until it goes ahead and loads up the Home Assistant instance. So there you go. Now you've got a fully functional Home Assistant instance running on this actual Raspberry Pi, but you can still use it for other things, but you can still use it for other things like browsing or as a wall tablet. We also have that kiosk mode or the full screen mode that struts up automatically. So if you were to mount this somewhere, you'd be able to easily access it and oh, have it open up Home Assistant even if the Pi reboots itself. Now here in this last section, I'll, call, I'll show you a couple of quick hacks that you can do that will let you turn this into an all-in-one Home Assistant machine, even if you're doing more than just the basics. So what the cool thing is about having a developer-friendly device like the Raspad 3 is that you have room to open up and play with the insides. Now I did have a user comment on the Raspad 3 video asking about power over ethernet support on this device. Now unfortunately, natively, you cannot do power over ethernet on the Raspad 3. However, if you purchase one of these, which is a little 12 volt power over ethernet injector, you can actually run this off of it, which this has been charging and running for the past three days using this PoE adapter and a power over ethernet switch that I have. Now, of course, 
it's just as simple as connecting the ethernet port and the power port and then connecting the other end to a power over ethernet switch. But unfortunately, you'd have to hide this somewhere if you were gonna mount this tablet someplace or, so that works great if you wanna have a single cable to power the device and provide ethernet, but you still have these adapters kinda of hanging out of the side. So another cool trick that you can do is with that back open, you can go ahead and install your radios inside the device itself. Now it's typically recommended to put your devices like a Z-Wave or Zigbee radio on the outside of the device so you have antenna coverage. But if you're covering a small area like an apartment, you could probably get away with embedding it inside of the device. Now, one of the cool things is that you're only using one of the four included USB ports on the Raspberry Pi itself when you have it installed in the in the tablet enclosure. You can go ahead and get a short right angle with a USB with the USB extender. You can use this to put the actual radio inside of the device and then close up the enclosure so that way you can kind of have it all all in one without any peripherals hanging off the outside. Now, again, this is not going to be recommended for a larger home. But if you have a smaller setup like a van, RV, or a apartment, it's great for that type of environment. Now, the last thing I want to discuss real quick is wall mounting. Now there, now there are no official wall mounts for this device, but you can easily make something for this. I have looked around on Thingiverse and Things and found a couple of different mounts for these. None of them are really wall mounting, but you can. There are some universal clips that I'll link to below that you could make some modifications to if you wanted to mount it, or you could easily put a shelf up, one of the little decorative shelves you can find at target and then just place the device on there if you want to have an easily accessible wall mounted tablet now again like i said in the first video this is probably not the best device for a wall mounted tablet but if you have a specific environment that you want to set it up for it would be a good usage for that or if you did want to mount this inside of a panel like in an rv or a van you could then have access to these these ports to be able to connect into your existing system so Again, one of these is a really cool investment and something fun you can use to play with for different devices. So there you go. Now you know how to set up Home Assistant in the Docker instance and set up a wall-mounted tablet running a Raspberry Pi like this. You can also use some of the hacks that I've shown you to extend this even further, making this an all-in-one device for different radios or mounting it to a wall and hiding those connections using power over ethernet. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to the channel. I've got more content coming along the way, especially through the holiday season. Thanks again for joining us on this week's video. If you'd like to see more projects involving Raspberry Pis, click here to go to my Raspberry Pi playlist. Or if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel by clicking our logo here. Thanks again and have a great rest of your week and have a happy Thanksgiving.